death um, of our Warburton elder up near Kalgoorlie. Um, for the last two years, um, the fight for justice has, has continued. Um, we've been fighting the whole time to terminate the contract. Um, we're sick and tired of the government saying, oh, it's too much money, we can't terminate the contract. Well, if a company can transport prisoners when the Corrective Services Department owes a duty of care and they can die in their custody in the disgusting, shameful, terrible way that the Warburton elder died, then I don't know how they can terminate a contract then. Because if they can't terminate a contract when there's a horrible death, like what happened to Mr Ward, well then what can they terminate a contract for? If there was something that, you know, in the corporate world, if there was something that didn't go for the government, didn't agree with the government, they would find a way to terminate that contract if it doesn't work within the best interests of the government. Yet an Aboriginal person can die in horrific circumstances and our government just walk around with their heads up like nothing's happened. And to the government I say shame, shame, shame and do something about it. We've got a family in Warburton that are still waiting for compensation for losing their loved one and we've got a government that stands here every day saying that they're trying to work out the best way to approach the situation and approach compensation. Well, there's only one way you can... You can sort it out, go and see the family and pay them the money that they deserve for what the government allowed to happen to their loved one, their husband, their father, their chairperson of their community. You know, this is a man who was well respected and still nothing has happened and in regards to justice for the family charges, you know, the guards and the police officers can walk around with no justice for Mr Ward, yet they can walk around, continue their duties like nothing happened. But if we go and walk around and we go and put our kids or our dogs in a car and walk into the casino for an hour or two, hire the security straight there, bang, charges. What's so different about a transport company that has a contract with the government and a government department that fails to protect the prisoners that are supposed to? I don't care whether it's police custody or whether it's prisoner custody. If they can't protect our people, well, what are they supposed to do? You know, they, they are all sitting up there in the prison with no support the way that they need it. You know, they're getting three punishments for having, you know, like a cone of gunja or whatever. You know, the boys smoke in there to relax themselves and because there's nothing else for them to do. And if there's nothing else for someone to do, what are they going to go and do? They're going to go and find something that's going to relax them or calm them because they can't participate in culture because there's no culturally appropriate programs up there. And at the moment, we're working on the Build Communities, Not Prisons campaign. And what we want is we want our people to take control. We want programs that are up in the